In national news, the Minister of Finance, National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, opened in the presence of the Minister of Transportation, Telecommunications, Mohammed Al Kabi, the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhru, and the President of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the DHL Express Regional Center expansion project for the Middle East and North Africa, and the company's new Bahrain office at Bahrain International Airport. Also present at the opening, where the chairman of the board of directors of DHL Express Bahrain, Sheikh Ahmed bin Ali Al Khalifa, the CEO of DHL for the Middle East and North Africa, Noor Suleiman, and company officials. The Minister of Finance affirmed Bahrain's keenness on supporting vital and promising economic sectors that constitute the main pillar for achieving economic growth, particularly the logistics sector, for its role in stimulating economic sectors and raising Bahrain's status as a regional hub for logistical services to achieve developmental goals led by His Majesty the King with a follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. The minister toured the company's new facilities and was briefed on the company's work mechanisms. He also watched a presentation on the details and goals of the projects as one of the main services provided by DHL Express. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa highlighted the importance of the project, noting the importance of continuing to support logistics sector projects and providing all means to develop it to create further opportunities for citizens and increase Bahrain's competitiveness regionally and internationally. For his part, the CEO of DHL for the Middle East and North Africa stated that the project is one of the company's largest recent investments, which reflects the keenness on providing innovative logistical solutions for companies to grow in the international market. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser bin Ibrahim Hamidan, headed the Bahraini delegation participating in the third International Conference on Sustainable Development of Water and Environment 2018 to 2028, organized by Tajikistan in cooperation with the UN. The minister delivered a speech stressing Bahrain's keenness to participate in this international conference, which brings together government officials and representatives of international and regional organizations based on the necessity of of collective international action to ensure sustainable management of water resources for current and future generations. He said Bahrain has launched many initiatives that adopt the latest technical means to achieve sustainable water management as part of national efforts to reach carbon neutrality by 2060. The chairman of the Tenders Board, Yasser Humidan, affirmed that the board has achieved record positive performance indicators in speed of response to requests received from partners, government agencies, suppliers and contractors during the first quarter of 2024. He noted that these indicators were a reflection of the board's efforts to increase the response speed index within a comprehensive strategic plan aimed at ensuring the provision of services and the implementation of government projects according to schedules to meet the needs of citizens and residents. The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Ben Mubarak Jum'a, approved the results of secondary school students and ninth grade students for the academic year 23-24. The results are available on the Bahrain Portal website and the Ministry's Education Portal, while the results of primary schools and seventh and eighth grades will be available on the Ministry's Education Portal. The Minister thanked His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister for supporting the educational sector. He said that this support has led to outstanding achievements both by students and on an institutional level. The minister commended the efforts of the personnel and employees of schools and directorates at the ministry who have contributed to the success of the academic year. He also thanked the students' guardians throughout the academic year. He announced that the pass rate in secondary schools reached 96% and 81% in intermediate schools, marking an increase from last year's 72%. He said that students who will have to sit for a second round of exams will be supported by the ministry. Dr. Jomar congratulated all passing students, noting that the ministry would announce the dates for receiving requests for re-evaluation of grades soon.
Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to form a board of directors for the Muharraq Occasions Hall, the chairman of the board of directors of the Muharraq Club, chairman of the hall's board of directors, Sheikh Ahmed bin Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, held a ceremony attended by officials in Bahrain and the people of Muharraq. Sheikh Ahmed delivered a speech in which he said that the meeting coincides with the kingdom's celebration of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne and in light of Bahrain's achievements. He expressed pride in the support provided by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, noting his follow-up on all projects that contribute to the development of Bahrain's governance. He also said that the whole will gather the people of Bahrain in their happy occasions to strengthen their cohesion and the social fabric and affirm their unity and loyalty to His Majesty the King, expressing gratitude to His Majesty. Sheikh Ahmed bin Ali noted that the royal gesture demonstrates His Majesty's belief in his nation and pride in its humanitarian and community values. He thanked the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, for his support to implement the project and to the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance, National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the companies that implemented the project and all contributors from ministries and government authorities. The Board of Trustees of the Bahrain Institute for Political Development held its second meeting chaired by its chairman, Dr. Ali bin Mohammed Rumayhi, in presence of board members and the executive director of the institute. The council stressed the importance of development and awareness of the people of the country and qualifying them in the political and democratic aspects in accordance with national laws and legislation and preserving the authentic values of the Bahraini society. The Council noted the National PATH programme, which seeks to provide training activities for members of the public and private sector at functional levels on enhancing national participation through developing human cadres and raising the level of public performance in a professional way. The head of the delegation of Bahrain Chamber for Commerce and Industry, participating in the 112th session of the International Labour Conference, Mr. Samir Nas, delivered a speech emphasizing that social justice and labour rights are a fundamental pillar in Bahrain's policies under the leadership of His Majesty the King, and the Kingdom is keen on implementing them as an integral part of its comprehensive development policy. He stressed on Bahrain's firm stance with the cause of the conference's current session to achieve economic development and raise the standards of living, especially in light of global changes and their impact on the development of human resources. Mr. Ness highlighted Bahrain's significant role in launching initiatives to create a decent and healthy work environment that fosters more investment, job security and sustainable growth in the labour market. He stressed the importance of strengthening cooperation with all international organisations, including the International Labour Organisation, to represent the economic sectors at the Arab, regional and international levels. Well, during the 112th session of the International Labour, Co Labour Conference and in a new international achievement for Bahrain, the International Labour Organization announced that the member of the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Sonia Janahi, was elected as original member of the ILO Board of Directors and as the Vice President of the Organization for Asia. Janahi affirmed that the achievement reflects the leadership's support to entrepreneurs and workers in Bahrain, particularly in achieving and enhancing labour gains since the beginning of the comprehensive reform project of His Majesty the King, with the support of the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, which gained Bahrain a fine international reputation, culminating in the achievement. 
The CEO of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Sarah Bouheji, headed Bahrain's delegation participating in the 121st session of the Executive Council meeting of the UN World Tourism Organization held in Barcelona in Spain. The meeting discussed finding the best solutions to develop the tourism sec sector, support positive recovery indicators and modern trends in international tourism and follow up on the implementation of the general work program. Boheji stressed that the travel and tourism sector is one of the most important economic sectors as it constitutes a fundamental pillar for sustainable development in many countries. She said that the authority is proud to organize the World Food Tourism Forum in November 24 for the first time in Bahrain, which is considered the largest event specialized in food tourism in the world. She invited all participants in the meeting to visit Bahrain to participate in the event to strengthen communication channels and exchange ideas and experiences between experts in tourism and food tourism in particular while identifying best practices and promoting food tourism as a key element in developing tourist destinations. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs welcomes the decision of the international security community on its call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, the release of hostages, the return of civilians to their homes and the secure provision of humanitarian aid in order to end the catastrophic war. The Ministry expressed appreciation to the US efforts in presenting this draft decision and providing it based on the initiative of US President Joe Biden. It called on the international community to guarantee the implementation of this decision in its three stages in order to achieve a permanent ceasefire, the complete withdrawal of Israeli forces from the Gaza Strip, the initiation of a major reconstruction plan and support for just and comprehensive peace negotiations to establish an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital.